In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and we give him thanks for his mercy and his goodness to all of the members of the human family. We thank God and I greet each of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. To the mother, to the sister, to the son, to the family of our brother, Stan Tukey Williams, to the Reverend Dr. Lewis E. Logan, to Minister Tony Muhammad, to Sister Barbara Becknell, and to all of those who had a part in this beautiful program concerning the victory of life of Stanley Tukey Williams. Eulogies in the Muslim tradition, we don't bother to give them because we're all here because we were touched by this man. But I feel greatly honored that Sister Barbara Becknell would ask me to give the eulogy for this mighty warrior for God, for peace, and for our people, and for humanity. Peace comes by submission to the will of God. This is the irrevocable will of God. Everyone that is born on this earth must at some time taste of death. The only way to escape this result is to never have been born. But since we were given the gift of life, at some point in time, we will ultimately taste of death. One of the attributes of God is that He is the life giver. Nobody gives life but that one supreme source of life. What we do with the life that he gives tells us who we are and whose we are. We have the power and the potential to become perfect reflections of him who gave us life but we also have the potential to degenerate into subhuman creatures that defile the gift of life and become dead spiritually and purveyors of death I want to say to my dear brother Stan's mother. Grieve not, my dear, dear sister, because your womb produced a man that death cannot touch. Yes. Jesus said, fear not the man who can kill the body, but fear him who can kill both the body and the soul. They took the physical body of our brother, but his unconquerable soul is alive and well. And that is why we cannot 
break down in grief. We must celebrate the strength of a good life that God sent this way to teach us all some valuable lessons. I uh, have tried to serve God all my life. But for the last 50 years of my life, a little over that, I've been trying to help the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to raise black men and women from a state of mental death and ignorance to transform our lives. I, I prayed that God would let Stan Tukey Williams live. So did Barbara. So did everyone sitting here. So did mom. So did son. So did daughter. We all prayed and ask God to spare his life. Well, we may wonder why God did you not answer our prayers? And to those of us who at this moment in time feel that sense of abandonment, because it appears that your prayer was not answered. There's a verse in the Holy Quran that says, I give life, God speaking, and I am the ultimate cause of death. And he says, no soul dies, but by my permission. So since he permitted this womb to give life to him. He has every right to call that life in when that life has run its course even though we would want him to be here longer. The God said, you must come in now. And as I saw the tears of the family, as I listened to my brother here, give us the chronological commentary of the last hours of my brother and our brother's life. As I saw the tears and heard the cries of the women of the family and tears in your eyes and tears in my eyes, I knew, I knew that a wise God had called him in. And mother, and all of you who were with him, and I say blessed to be with him in those final hours, you saw something that you might not have understood exactly what you were looking at. You saw a man at peace with God and at peace with himself. And you have no way, listen to me good, mama, you have no way of knowing how God was communicating to his servant in those final hours where that servant could forgive and say thank you to everybody who did something to help him. You couldn't see the angels who were there to escort him back to his sender because his work on earth had been accomplished. Now what was that work? I'm here in this wonderful church that we preach Christ as the Redeemer. 
Well, if you put something in the pawn shop, <laughs> you have the ticket. Right. But at some point, if you want to redeem, yeah. you have to pay a price for redemption. Yeah. You see, you talk Jesus, but sometimes you are blind to see a man who walked Jesus. So when I talk to you, I want to lift all discomfort from your hearts because this is a great man. who experienced hell Come on. Yeah. and only one who went to the depth of hell is qualified to ascend to the heights of heaven and this is why Jesus had to descend into hell before he could ascend into heaven Dan Tookie Williams was 17 years of age and he founded the Crips well the enemy co-founder thank you the enemy is always watching for leadership that will arise among black people because the government of the United States has a denial objective yeah. and that is that black people should never organize effectively because it is only by organizing effectively that you can change the reality under which we live yes, sir. That's right. Beautiful. so they saw in Stan Tukey Williams, a potential threat. Strong, muscular, fearless, a warrior. He told me when I was blessed to meet him, and I didn't meet him except through Sister Barbara and Dwayne Moody, they came to my hotel room and played me a tape. And I heard his voice. And tears welled up in my eyes because I knew what I was listening to. See, when you are directed by the Spirit of God, you know those who are directed by that same Spirit. So I then had to go to San Quentin to see my brother. Yeah. Come on. I've been looking at black men for 50 years playing games. Yeah. I shouldn't by now know one who ain't playing no game. Stan was as sincere and committed and a redeemed soul. Now to mama, to son, to sister, to family, look, look, look. There's preachers up on this rostrum. And I don't care how well we preach. You can't make your son what you are. You may feel the anointing of the Spirit of God and you may sit down with your Bible and teach your children. But unless God steps in the picture and touches that boy and touches that girl, you will not see a transformation in that life. How could a man be sentenced to death in a hellhole like Hell. San Quentin. In solitary confinement for years. Why did
did you put him there, God? I wanted him to discover me. And I wanted him to discover the real self yes. of Stan Tukey Williams. Yes, sir. So without preacher intervention, Come on. No preacher. you didn't hear me. No preacher. Without preacher intervention, right. without family intervention, right. without Whoa. friend intervention, Come on. God stepped in yeah. and touched this man and a transformation began to take place in the man you knew Come on. as the co-founder of the Crips. But he became Stan, Come on. the man, the resurrected man. Stan, the man. Stan, the redeemed man. Stan, the man, a man that would lead his people in a better way. Why, why did you take him, God? As my brother, my dear, dear brother, was so blessed and I feel so special to listen to you recount the hours. I was so moved because I was watching Stan as I listened to this friend of his discuss the final hours. And I said to myself, he will be greater in death That's right. than he ever was in life. And so family, dear family, look, I want to bring you for this the last few minutes of my so-called eulogy. I want to bring you to Jesus personally because he was an innocent man. But he was an innocent man with a word in his mouth that threatened the political powers and the religious powers of his day. Stan didn't claim religion That's right. because he saw the divisiveness right. in religion. He saw the hypocrisy in religion. He saw the hatred produced by people who claim the love of God. How can you claim to love God and be a Christian or be a Muslim or be a Jew and then you are killing and hating and destroying one another when all the prophets came from the same God. Yeah. All recognized the same Father. Come on. Stan Tookie Williams outgrew religion. Yeah. Ooh, say that. Man. Now, excuse me if I don't mean to step on any toes, but he outgrew Religion that restricts, confines, narrows the focus. And he wanted to take on the wings of an eagle and fly high so he could see broader, wider, deeper. And when Snoop met him, Snoop met a profound mind right. in a physical body. Yeah. He, he touched my brother. That was a magnificent poem, Snoop. Yeah. And you know, Snoop, <laughs> you a magnificent man. And I tell you something, brother. See the mantle. You know when e Elisha uh, was with Elijah, yeah. right. yeah. and uh, Elisha said to Elijah, "You know, if I can see you ascend, mm. would you give me a double portion 
of your spirit. And he was there. And he saw his master ascend. And what he asked for, he got. I heard a different snoop today. I heard a snoop that in the name of Tookie Williams will help and we will help you create the movement in his noble name. That man was touched by a supreme power. And any of us that were ever in his presence, we knew that. Whether we were Christian or Muslim or Jewish or black or white or Hispanic or of no particular religious persuasion, we knew when we met him, we met a man profoundly moved by higher principles. So, Jesus, when he angered the authorities, they said, we got to get him. How can we get him? Well, we got to have some false witnesses. Why would you snitch on your brother to lighten your sentence for what you did? Why would you let them use you like that? It is because you have no love for yourself, no love for your people. so you can be used like that. There were some people around Jesus like that. They were false witnesses. Naturally, when the Sanhedrin saw that Jesus was doing things on the Sabbath that didn't seem quite right to them, they they used the law. To trap Jesus. And Jesus being wise. He said well I didn't come to change the law. I I came to fulfill it. Well he was letting the Sanhedrin of that day know that a fulfiller don't look like the man that's preaching it. A fulfiller lives it and then closes the book on it. Come on. Well, they brought him before a governor. They kind of knew that he was innocent. But it was a political thing. So he washed his hands of the matter. And allowed him, an innocent man, to be crucified. Barbara Becknell and your sister in arms. Two women who were there watching brother. See, there was two women around Jesus along with his mother. And there was a faithful disciple named John. He, He was there too. All the rest of them had run away. (laughs) So then they they hung him up. They hung him up. But look, he beheld his mother. Mm. Woman, behold your son. Mary and Martha, they were there. 
and he went through excruciating pain. torture. Yeah. Not for 35 minutes, but for many, many hours. And then he looked with compassion on his tormentors. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Stan Tukey Williams said, I forgive the political governor who didn't have the courage to wash his hands of the matter. But his, his early anger switched immediately to compassion. I forgive him. The violence must stop. And there he laid on that gurney in the form of a cross. Come on, now. That's right. Resolved like the master. Come on. Knowing that death would never touch him. Never. He strained to sit up, to lift his head up, to look at his friend and smile. Wanted to let you all know it's all right. Now let me close this. The master was so magnificent when he knew that was his fate. So he gathered his disciples. And he said, let not your hearts be troubled over these things, mama, sister, son. I have a destiny. Where I go, you cannot come right now because you got work to do while I'm gone. Now Jesus was so wise yeah. and so was Brother Stan. Yes, sir. And I don't want the media to say what sacrilege. Come on. Talk to them. Farrakhan. Farrakhan. <laughs> Compared this killer's life Come on. with Jesus. But every true revolutionary, every man that will not bow down to the forces of this world will be rebuked and scorned and evil spoken of. This is the best place to hold his home going for more than most in here. He didn't talk him. That's right. He lived him. Now, before he passed, Jesus had a, a supper. And he knew he had a betrayer sitting at the table with him. And uh, he said, uh, this is my bread. This is uh, my body. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. Mm. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he poured it. He said, this is my blood that I shed for the New Testament and for the remission of sins. Drink this as oft as you can in remembrance of me. What did you know, Jesus, when you were doing that? He said, feed on me in your heart. Come on. See? And lo, he said, I will be with you. 
to the end of the world. Where is Stan? That's not Stan. That's the house that he lived in. He's not there. That's what we call the remains. But the essence, that's not there. All you can do is apply this to the earth, or as I understand his will was to cremate that body and turn it into dust and sprinkle it over a water body near in South Africa somewhere. Well, but he's more alive now than he was when you last saw him. Why is he more alive now? See, sometimes when somebody's walking with you, you don't see them as clearly as you should, as clearly as you could. Because sometimes our humanity is a veil for our divinity. I might cuss one time. I might do something strange. And somebody see me and say, see, I told you he wasn't no good. But when you are gone, the things that remain are the things that you do for God and his Christ. That's why you can never bury or cremate Stan. Come on. Now, feed on me. See, every school, we should have a movement Come on. that puts Stan's books in every school throughout America, listen, yeah. the peace protocol yeah. should be everywhere there's gang conflict. Right. See, and if you feed Come on. on his words, see, as they were reading his words, that's how you communicate with him. Right. Now, you go back and read his words tomorrow, and I guarantee you'll see something tomorrow that you didn't see today. Now, try it and see if I'm lying. And then think about his life. That's the wine. It ain't just his words, because he was an example of the word that he gave. So if we eat his words, like the scripture says, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. If you feed on the words of Brother Stan, he will come closer to you and you will not only see his redemption clearly, you become a part of his redemption. Now, all of you who are his pallbearers, you were his buddies out here. But he became a new man in there. All the young men and women that are listening outside, see, he paid a price not just for his redemption, but for ours. Now look at this, and I'm finished. Look, 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 brothers and sisters. He paid a price. And the price was his life. He's greater than Galileo because Galileo told the church that 
oh no no the earth is not the center of the universe it's the sun well when you challenge the church you, you got a problem <laughs> and when they were about to kill him he recanted so his death couldn't give life to the truth that he had discovered because he was unwilling to die for what he believed. Come on. Do not stand. See, it was his innocence. He said to me when I visited him, he said, Minister. I did a lot of wrong things. I did a lot of wrong things. He said, that's why I'm here. He said, but I've repented for the wrong things that I did, but I cannot repent for something that I did not do. So I believe he's an innocent man. And just as Reverend Jackson said earlier to all my Christian friends who are happy that Stan is gone because he did some bad things. But yet you pick up your Bible and you read the writings of Paul and you quote them quite well. But Paul was a persecutor of Christians until he had that road to Damascus experience. And then he became the greatest disciple of Jesus Christ. In the Islamic tradition or history, Khalid bin Walid was the sword that killed many Muslims. But when he became converted, they didn't charge him with the killing of those Muslims. They died that he might live to become the sword of God. Stan has paid a price, dear brothers, here and on the outside for your redemption. And now you must avail yourself of Stan Tookie Williams' example and life. I close with these words. Prophet Muhammad said he saw the sun rising from the west in the latter day. Now this is the far western shore of the west. There is no city in America more plagued with gang violence than Los Angeles. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Los Angeles on the redemptive spirit and life of Stan Tookie Williams decided today. Not tomorrow. Don't wait till tomorrow. Right now that the blood shedding must cease. Wait, wait, wait now. These young soldiers, you are natural leaders of your people all over America. Suppose in Los Angeles you put the guns down. Suppose in Los Angeles you let the light of truth and peace and joy and justice and hope rise among the black and the brown and the poor. Then the light from the West will start shining back toward the east and before you know it in Chicago in Gary Indiana in Detroit in Newark New Jersey in New York they'll say we got the light 
from the West. Who is Stan? Stan Tukey Williams is the patron saint of all those struggling in gang life. And if we lift him up, lift him up, then his wisdom, his spirit, his words will draw these young people out of where they are to where he is. And then, as my Miss uh, Jagger, Jagger? Yes, Jagger, you, you, you said free at last. When you met him, he was already free. He wasn't waiting for death to free him. He was already freed from the demons within himself. So when you saw him, you saw a man that was free at last. Why don't we become free? and become friends and brothers. So when we leave this place today, let no one break the peace. And let us go from this place when the benediction is said, determined that Stan Tookie Williams lives and his spirit lives in me. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Come on, family, you could do better than that. Let's give a round of applause to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for that wonderful message. All praise is due to God. And long live the spirit of Stan Tookie Williams. Brothers and sisters, at a moment that we're coming to a close, we're asking the brothers that are on the outside, the sisters that are on the outside, don't let nobody provoke you today. Don't let nobody provoke you today. Or tomorrow, or from now on, we got to give each other clemency. And so, in the spirit of Stan Tookie Williams, please, we ask that you do that for us. At this time, we would like to bring and show you that there is no grave that can hold Stan Tookie Williams. We would like to bring up someone that when you see him, you're going to say, my God, there Stan Right there, I see the father because you're gonna see his son. Bring up his son, brother Trayvon Williams, the son of Stan Tookie Williams. Come on, give him a round of applause as he come to the microphone to give a tribute on behalf of the family. Wow. You know, you know what though? You know, uh, I asked the Lord, I said, well, Lord, why you put me in this position? You know, why me? And he kind of revealed something to me. And you know, I found myself today asking the same question. I say, why did you put me in this position after a man like this? Why would you have me go on after a man like this? Is that the fair kind? Come on now. What is there to say after this man spoke? But you know, I say, well, I looked at Snoop. I say, well, that's like, that's like putting Millie Vanilli on after Snoop Dogg. Right. Hey. He got a job to do hey. in the hey. name of his father. So, so it don't really go. So I know my, my message might be a little bit small. It might not be as great as what the minister said, but please bear with me. And you know, go ahead. Go ahead. to show you how spiritual it is, man, the spirit reveals something to me. And it showed me that my father really did redeem himself as well as going to my son, man, the spirit came in my son and he told me, he told me something. He said, son, he said, daddy, we got to talk. I said, what? My son said, my son said, daddy, we got to talk. My, my, my four-year-old son, I say, huh? He say, sit down. What was your daddy's name? He said, yeah, well, he's on TV. He's in books and whoop-de-whoop-de-whoop. -whoop -whoop. I say, wow. 
And so after, at, during the conversation, he finally told me, I said, well, where is he? He said, well, right now he's saying, where am I? And I said, well, wow, is that hell? But then he assured to me, he said, no, he up there with Christ. This was a four-year-old son to show you how the spirit moves, you know? And it's two scriptures that I'm going to read to show you that put closure to, uh, that they kind of like put a closure to all this hoopla that's been going on, you know? And one of them was in the book of John 15, 20, it says, 20, it says, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Right. Now, if that don't mean that we are God's children, if you don't see the similarities, as the brother, as Minister Tony said, as far as Saul and Paul, if you don't see this, if you read the book of Esther, like my auntie told you, read the book of Esther when you get home, and you'll see that the day that they was going to kill all the Jews was on the day, December 13th, the 12th month on the 13th day. All these things you start seeing and you start understanding, you know? But what I'm going to do, you know, me and my father, we would always talk, and those of them that do know him, they know he kind of like had a macho-ness to him that once you broke it and penetrated inside it, you can always jab him when you wanted to. And Barbara know, as well as Shirley, that I was one of the ones that always could jab him and get him out of that, which he had, which was a good rah, that good masculinity that I see in all you brothers out there. But, um... I told him one thing I told him, I said, you know what, man? I'm going to have to clean up all this mess you made. And you know he didn't like that. You know that, Bob. <laughs> he really didn't like it. But you know, now, because of you, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you made this mess more bigger than I signed up for. Man. Because now what you did is not only have you uh, showed these dudes out here on these streets that change don't mean nothing, but you showed all these people worldwide that change don't mean nothing. So now, me being a son, as one dude told me, the son of a gun, the son of a soldier, the son of a peacemaker, I feel it's my duty, if you will accept me, to go on a worldwide campaign to show people that redemption is near. Redemption can be claimed. So you know, I see you, brother. I see you. I see you. So really, 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 I'm asking all you soldiers out there, man, please accept me. If I have to show you my background, my background will be showed. I was raised by soldiers, and they know who they are. I'm the son of a soldier, so I feel I can speak for a soldier, which was my father. So please allow me, man. Pray for me. I see you, Bloodhound, man. I appreciate what you did, man. This ain't nothing but love, man, and love will be exemplified. But as I said, I told my father I was going to clean up his mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that it's spiritual and that his mess will be clean. First of all, for you youngsters out there, redemption breaks down to, as we say in the streets, like to come anew. It's almost like to put on a new outfit, to change your clothes, to change your program. And for some of you, it might be the Tita Lee. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tita Lee, let's do this. Let's come anew. Let's start this. But for me, I looked at redemption, and it broke down to free from what distresses or harms. And we know, those of you out there on the street, man, you know to hurt this cause, man. You know this ain't right, what we going through, man, what we doing to each other, man. You mean to tell me you wouldn't like to be able to go in a car with your son or with your girl and drive to any neighborhood and get out and go get some good food? Come on, man. Let's be real, man. Come on now. Let's be real, man. Let's be real, man. Let's be real, man. It's time to wake up, man. I'm on a mission, man. It's a, it's a scripture in Genesis 49 and 10. It say, as a couch, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Well, Schwarzenegger, you have woke up some lions. And these lions will speak. Okay? So that's, that's, the, that's the Schwarzenegger. So instead of hating them, I do want to tell Arnold Schwarzenegger, thank you. Thank you. 
thank you for what you did because now you will see the effects of what you did, the aftermath, okay? So we see that redemption breaks down to free from what distresses or harm to release from blame or debt. And I feel my father did all this. You know, I read in one of them little articles, I don't read the paper too much because it's too much hoopla, too much madness. But he did say, well, how could a man redeem himself if he's innocent? I say, you stupid. First of all, redemption has nothing to do with innocent. This man is saying he was innocent of the crimes that he was convicted of. His redemption was to free from what distresses or harms or to release from blame of death his legacy as far as being a crip. That's what he redeemed himself from. It had nothing to do with his innocence. What are you talking about? Learn, 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 learn your words. Learn your Greek words, you Greeks. You know what I mean? So um, it also breaks down to change for the better or to convert into something of value. This is the spirit of redemption, and it's something that all y'all have, brothers, man. Y'all got it, man. I see it, man. I drive down, and when I drive, and what I've been witnessing, I can see it in y'all eyes, man. Brothers ain't happy with this state we in. Come on. We ain't happy, man. If you sit up here and say you enjoying watching over your back and going through what you're going through, man, you crazy, man. You crazy, man. So if I got to be the one to step up and say, hey, man, we going to change and we going to do this, hey, I'll do it. Now, I'm, I'm not going to hog the mic, because you know I'm not really used to all this. This is new to me, like I say, really coming behind Mr. Farrakhan. Man, I don't believe this, man. Hey, Lord, 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 what are you doing to me? Why me? And that's to you brothers out there, man. Y'all ain't no different to me, man. You got brothers out there saying that, let soldiers speak. Like I say, well, I consider myself a soldier. And if you look on the, uh, on the uh, obituary, if that's what you want to call it, it's a, fun, it's, a, uh, it's a P.O. box on there, man. You write me, you write that, you, put, you find that, you get that uh, P.O. box, and you write your letters in there, and I guarantee you it'll get spoke. I guarantee you I'll do it, because that's what I need. Not only that, if you give me funds, that's cool. But more than that, I need your prayer and your approval, man. I need your approval to do what I'm doing. So before I close, let me go ahead and clear my father's name and show the governor what it means to be redeemed in the eyes of the... Holy Father, because this is a holy book, which means true book. And so you can't say my father had enough power that he influenced the maker of this book to make this book, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm turning to Psalms 130. And to show you how deep this is, this was revealed to me one night as I was laying on my bed. I turned straight to the chapter. Psalms 130 says, a song of degrees. Well, when you understand a degree, it breaks down to a step or stage are a process of order. And I'm going to share with you the process of order that my father went through because we talked about it and it's written right here in a book. You see the coincidence? But it's no such thing as a coincidence. That's how you know that it really is something about being redeemed. But when you deal with spiritual, spiritualist people, they don't understand spiritual things. It shows in the way they dance. You get it? They don't feel the spirit. But we feel the spirit. So for all you out there, I'm going to show you the spirit to show you how the spirit came in my father. In Psalms 130, it says, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Was not he in prison? Was not he in solitary confinement? It says, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. And many of you brothers know what I'm talking about when they closed that cage door. It says, Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. When you understand supplications, it means like to beg. Please, Lord, please. This is what it's saying. It said, if thou shouldest mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who shall stand? Iniquity break down to wickedness. In other words, Lord, if you're going to try to judge everybody on the wickedness we done, it ain't going to be nobody left on the face of the earth. Because we all wicked. We all do wicked things. We all have fall short of the glory of God. Or as the famous saying is, he who is thou sin cast the first stone. But to show you how spiritual this is, listen. He said, verse 4, but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Not Schwarzenegger, not the warden, not the judge, but that, that, that most high God in Christ might be feared. He say, I wait for the Lord. 
My soul does wait in his word do I hope. Listen to this. This is what touched me. It says, my soul waited for the, mo waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. What time did they want him to die? What time was the execution scheduled for? 1201 and a what? It says, my soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. Then it goes on to say, I say more than they that watch for the morning. You see, the, you see how symbolic it is? You see it? Do you really see it, man? This is spiritual, man. This is spiritual, bro. And that's why they're trying to stop us because they understand that we possess that spirit. We possess it, man. We possess it, man. Okay. And it says, let Israel hope in the Lord. Now, this name Israel, you got to understand, it's a Hebrew word that means Yasharala. But when you break down Israel, it really breaks down to one that's able to conquer the spiritual realm as well as the physical realm. Well, you look around and tell me we didn't overcome spirit, spiritualness as well as physicalness, physical uh, slavery. Uh, the spiritualness like putting a man in a cell and telling him he's going to die on, on December 13th or, or having a man sitting him right next to the, to the place where they're going to execute him. Uh, or like they did with the Willie Lynch letter when they would tie, take two horses and would tie a man to it and would set him afire and send both the horses different ways in front of his family. This is what you call, this is how they try to get subliminally, they try to mess with you spiritually. But understanding who we are, you understand none of this phase us. This is why they say we take a licking and keep on ticking. Don't you feel it? Because spiritually, we represent these people that the Bible talks about. Uh, so it says, let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. Now you know what mercy breaks down to? Mercy is not getting something that you deserve. Grace is getting something that you don't deserve. You understand what I'm saying? And you understand why I say the Lord is so gracious and mercy? This is why he is, man. When you understand this, this makes you try to please him, to do what he say do. Okay, so it says, let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. Need I say more? 